Hey, what's up everyone? Thanks for tuning in. Today's video is sponsored by DistroKid. For those unfamiliar, DistroKid is a service that gets your music into Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, all the online stores and streaming services. So if you're an artist and you're looking to put out some music, follow the link in the description of the video. You get a discount on your fee and you support Chats Home all at once, so it's a win-win. And yeah, there's a lot of distributors out there, but I think DistroKid is the best at what they do. Um, one thing they offer in particular is called HyperFollow, which is you know the link that you'll see a lot where it's one link in bio and you click on that link and it shows the release on all of the streaming services and stores. So it'll show your release on Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, all of that. So your fans just have like a one-stop shop link to click. You could also add your social media on it. You could do pre-saves, like people could pre-save your, you know, your Spotify release. Um, so yeah, it's a really cool tool and they offer that and a ton of more things. So I would personally really recommend it and I'm a fan and I'm very happy that they are on board as partners. Um, so check it out again, the link in the description of this video. And with that, here's Levitation Room. Hope you enjoy. Thank you. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Chad's Home. Today, I'm sitting with a band whose music has taken them all around the world, but they are from right here in the City of Angels, Levitation Room. What's up, guys? How's it going? Up, it's going Thanks for well. having us. Of course. Thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I want to talk about the brand new single. It just came out. It's the first Spanish song, Pienso en T. It's a great vibe. Congratulations on the track. Uh, so, so, yeah, why did you decide to write a song in Spanish? Got this um... One? Well, I mean, we're, we're all Hispanic, uh, with the exception of our keyboardist, Glenn. So we're, you know, we're proud of our heritage. And uh, I'd always wanted to write a song in Spanish. Um, my Spanish is not that good, so I had someone help me with the lyrics. But um, uh, I wanted to do, because my mom and my, my grandparents had always been asking me, like, hey, how come you don't write a Spanish song? Yeah. So finally just did. That's awesome. Yeah. Did it for the roots, you know? For the roots. Yeah. Love it. Did your parents like it? Oh, they loved it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's awesome. Yeah. Made my mom cry. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Yeah. And did you write it in, like, the, during the pandemic, or was this an old song? Or? Um, you know, it's crazy, because the song actually goes back a few years with oh, just, really? like, little pieces that I used to kind of just mess around with, and then it just kind of came full circle later on. Um, but we... Uh, we pretty much, uh, I pretty much wrote the, the song and Gabriel had me put another half of the song together right before um, the pandemic hit and then we recorded it during the pandemic. Got it. Yeah. Okay, So nice. not, not too long ago we recorded it. Dang. Yeah. Hey guys, we're Levitation Room. We're here at Chad's home and this first song is our new single that we just released called Pienso en Ti. Van cantando para ti, estás escuchando por ahí. Luz mejillas brilla con su luz. Yo pienso en ti. Si pongo mi mano en tu mano, caminamos juntos por el arco. Entre la luna en tu rey, yo pienso en ti.
So was the song Quarantine actually like a newer song then? Like, did you just write that one well, during quarantine? Oh, Quarantine, yeah. We wrote yeah. Quarantine like, yeah, like right, you know. First week. Of, first week because yeah. it, you got all the feels, you know. Oh, yeah. Like, I was in my room just like, what is happening to the world right now? I know. It's incinerating. <laughs> yeah. And so. Last month was pretty wild. Yeah. yeah, I was feeling kind of depressed and isolated in my room and just wrote, wrote that song. It just came out of me. Yeah. Honestly, I kind of missed the first like half of the pandemic. It was like no traffic, <laughs> <True>. <laughs> no, like, no one around. That was kind of, that was probably the best part of it. But. You were vibing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> straight vibing. <laughs> yeah, that song, uh, yeah, of course, very timely and everything. But I love the harmonic in it, too. Were, did you learn the harmonica like just for the song or no harmonica is uh, first uh, first instrument I ever learned oh wow actually hold on sorry to interrupt I met this guy uh, with a harmonica like I had a harmonica and he saw me and that's how we met <laughs> yeah like, we were at a party and I was like hey let me see that harmonica real quick and <laughs> I just like I was trying to show off so I just like wailed on him but um, that's his history but yeah I mean uh, sometimes at our performances I'll you know like in between us you know some like heavy hitting songs I'll, I'll bring out the acoustic and yeah do some harmonica like bob dylan covers or something yeah but um i've been wanting to write a song for the band like that that was acoustic with some harmonica on it so love it finally got the chance you know yeah totally yeah. is that a hard instrument to play like is that the hardest um, instrument that you play? it's pretty easy once you learn how to uh bend a note mm. um then it just like it becomes really and my ear i don't know if i just trained my ear yeah from just jamming along to like so many blues songs and and country songs that i just like right just comes natural picked it up that's yeah. cool yeah i mean speaking of like the like you said the bob dylan covers i feel like obviously all your music is very classic like the earlier stuff is a little bit more like psych and then bringing in some more soul and like r&b elements and then the most recent songs more like folk or like quarantine at least um, so I, I'm just so curious, like for each of you, what were some of like your first music memories? Like, did you, when, when you were like four years old, were you listening to Bob Dylan and like, <laughs> your parents? You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm so curious about that. Um, well, for me, my earliest memories, was, I was like obsessed with Michael Jackson. Like I idolized him. So oh, nice. I loved his dancing. I loved his music. And when I was like in like first grade, I remember my mom like in my room just helping me like choreograph like moves to like do like, the talent right show and stuff. <laughs> and I always just loved dancing and my mom always said I was dancing in the womb. So That's cool. Yeah. Um I feel like K Earth one oh one was always playing on the radio. And but uh, aside from that, like I come from a Hispanic background as well and uh <laughs> Just a bunch of like corridos and like rancheras and yeah. stuff. So that's kind of like what I grew up listening to. But uh, I, I eventually, you know, ventured out on my own thing. But uh, yeah, hip hop, I think, yeah. as a kid, you know, the, the, my youth. Definitely hip hop. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. In but the yeah, 90s. Like, I, I think we could all say the, the Beatles has been uh, a part of our uh, early. Uh, listening i guess yeah. yeah the beatles were always in the background somewhere yeah like yeah. Earth 101 and yeah yeah definitely growing up for me my my earliest memory for music is the beatles my dad would always listen to them and play them and talk about them so much john paul george and ringo like <laughs> i thought they were my uncles or something you know? i was like how am i gonna meet Juan these guys you know like, yeah, okay <laughs> so yeah I, I grew up with that like breakfast with the beatles every sunday my dad's out Damn. in the garage blasting you know from like eight to noon you know so that's so sick I love yeah it. it's always been around yeah did you so on the hip-hop front did you guys listen just like a bunch of west coast hip-hop growing up around la west coast and east coast too like yeah. wu-tang is probably like my one of my, even now like one of my top favorite really? groups like ever in top five um, Gangstar, I like Gangstar, so and of course good. they're affiliated with them. So good. But, uh, even like West Coast, like underground scenes. Well, you're too. a big Biggie fan too, right? Yeah, like I just all across the board, I think. Yeah. Tupac, and he was from the East Coast, and then went to the West Coast. But, but just growing up True. being a kid in the '90s, Los Angeles is right. like you couldn't escape hip hop music. You yeah, know? the sound yeah, of LA, yeah. definitely. For sure. Did Dread. you ever experiment with any? Like, did you make beats or like ever go into the hip hop world? I no. would just like make beats with my with my mouth, like making <laughs> sounds and stuff. Give us, give us a beat, John. <laughs> 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 
know? <laughs> that, you know? Yeah. I kind of wish right I could like rap like freestyle like off the top of my head. Though. That'd be yeah. super cool, right? I used to, I used to write like rap lyrics <laughs> to like myself and yeah. stuff. You know, Sick. like even, like back in the punk days, like, yeah. when I was into punk. Yeah. I would have like this notebook of lyrics I would write, and I would. I'd just be rapping to myself. In the mirror, just yeah. I kind of uh, entertained the idea recently of like writing more like, like take free, a take a form. levitation room song and then cut it up, add some like a, you know some drum machine or something to it and make it like Sample a hip hop or you know some kind of song like that. Man, I feel like there would be some like super cool samples that you could take from levitation yeah. room music. And like put into a hip hop song, even just like producers, any yeah. hip hop producers watching this. Yeah, that would be cool. Do that. Let us know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, speaking of the punk days too, because the hits was like your first musical project. Oh, wow. You know about that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, that was mine and Julian's first. Well, yeah, first. It was my first. Yeah. Uh, I've been in other punk bands as a teenager with my brother and friends, but that was uh -huh. like the first one where we like, you know, try to be a band right and play like venues. really go for it yeah and Dude. that was like my first our first endeavor together collaborating as me trying to be musicians you know yeah. yeah back then i didn't even play guitar or anything i just sang oh cool so yeah it was more of like a late 70s style stooges new york, dolls. New york dolls pipe punk band got it yeah, yeah. And, uh, nice yeah do you miss anything about being in a punk band uh, no. The carelessness of it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, like, on Instagram, those, you get those feeds of, like, classic, you know, rock bands or things, and they'll show, like, a, sometimes you see a, a punk show in, like, a big old circle pit or something. And right, like, right. Wow, I used to be, like, gun-ho in there, you know? And it's right. Like, I don't think I would do it, though, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Did you ever play any like punk music? Or I did. I I played in a punk band with a couple of friends in the garage, and we oh, just cool. played backyard shows. I remember the first show I ever played was like at a, a hookah lounge, and I thought I was just like fucking rock star. After that, I was like, fuck, <laughs> this is it. Dude. Yeah, for sure, yeah. <laughs> that is like rock star material in the punk rock. World, oh, for right? sure. Yeah, the hookah lounge. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Hookah lounge tour across the <laughs> across the country. <laughs> the San Gabriel Valley. Only doing hookah lounge, hookah lounge, lounge yeah. tour. Yeah, you can make a whole tour out of that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, speaking of, I, I know you guys had like massive touring plans for this year, which was a bummer. Um, yeah. But and I'm sure that you missed touring a lot. And I read in an interview that you had a uh, like a UFO sighting oh, on tour shit. one time. Do you yeah. think that was the like, craziest thing that you ever seen on tour? That was one of the craziest. That things, and man. a possible dead body. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> yeah. That's possible though. But I mean like alleged. Um yeah, the the UFO experience is, was crazy just only because we all saw it together and we could each corroborate each other's stories right. about it, you know. But yeah, we saw some crazy lights in the sky um on our way to 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 play a gig um Mexico or we're passing through New Mexico or something. No, right? we we're, we're Arizona. Arizona. Yeah, we're in Arizona. And um uh, our this guy's girlfriend at the time, Charnay, uh, noticed some lights um, to the right of us in the car, and so we're all looking and we're like, "Man, that looks crazy! It looked like these round little orbs of light that were just kind of suspended in the sky, and we're just, you know, sitting, sitting there." Yeah. And then they just kind of started dancing around, making formations, and doing all this like crazy in unison stuff. too. Yeah. Like they're like yeah cohesive like they would go and away or flash together you know like, yeah it was crazy and then like they all disappeared at once and then we were just kind of sitting there like <laughs> on the edge of our seat like what's gonna happen next and then all of a sudden these huge blinking lights like that were going around this like invisible s sphere. sphere wow yeah it was just blinking like in front of it looked like the immensity of it i could compare it to like independence day Dang. Like remember that UFO? Yeah, yeah. It was so huge. Like we were scared out of our minds. And we're we were screaming. even like, should we stop looking at it so like it <laughs> right. doesn't notice so it us? Or you know? yeah. like, like if if it knows we're looking, is it gonna <laughs> right. come at us? Yeah. So. That's terrifying. It turns out there was like a military base, like right in that area. So I'm pretty sure they were running some tests or yeah. something like that. You know. I mean, it kind of went under the radar, but the Pentagon released like videos of UFOs like yeah, a months oh, ago. Yeah, totally. Yeah, but then like you know the news cycle is so insane all the time, so it got like brushed away. So many but events, dude. Like, yeah, that's yeah. a trip. 
Yeah. yeah. A lot of things are going under the radar right now. Yeah. That's the truth. Yeah. Um, so wait, a dead body too? Yeah. Well, it's alleged. Um, <laughs> we were leaving. Alleged Can- by you. Kansas, yeah. Kansas City. Me and Chris, our bass player, were, we were driving late, leaving Kansas City. And, um, you know, just like a Midwest highway, no, no one on the road. And, like, we're driving and Chris skids. And we're just like, oh, what was that? And we just saw, like, it looked like the length of a body, but, like, wrapped up in a tarp or a blanket, Ooh. just like in the road. And we're, we, we, we looked at each other and we're like, dude. I think that was a dead body, dude. You know, like, oh. what do we do? It's like, I don't know. We got to be over here, but, you know, by tomorrow. So Pretty sure going. we saw some limbs or something coming yeah. out of it, too. We're just like, what oh, the hell? so sketchy. And then, like, later that night, too, we parked on, on the side of the road and there was this, like, huge storm uh-huh. passing through. And it was rocking our, it was rocking our van like a boat, man. Oh. We were like frightened out of our minds. Oh my god! It was just a crazy night. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. Stuff that happens on tour. Right. Yeah. I, I, th- know, I think it was a tornado passing nearby. Tor- like a tornado. And wow. we were just on the highway sleeping, like exhausted. Like whatever happens, happens. Whoa. You know. But. Jeez. We'll play smart next time. Right. <laughs> when tour <laughs> comes back eventually. Yeah. I don't know. It's such a bummer. Like it, I feel like this year has stolen so many. Uh, Memories or so many like crazy things that could have happened out there because well, you were gonna been. go to Europe, yes. right? Yeah. Excuse me. You were gonna go to Europe, right? We were gonna do Europe. We were gonna do like we were like a week out. Yeah. Yeah. We were about yeah. to leave. Damn. Yeah. Europe. We're gonna do a like a national tour as well, and then you know other things were. Yeah, we to were pan g- out. we were gonna yeah. do a tour with Los Dug Dugs, which is like a famous late '60s, early '70s Damn. Mexican band. That would have been crazy. And. Um, and we just use the time to write music. We're yeah. working on our third album now. Yeah. And um, and recording these new songs, these new singles that just came out. You know, so you gotta yeah. let that creative steam out now. You know, because for other sure. than that, you're always just preparing for a show or the tour. You know, the, right. the creative side doesn't really get to be nurtured so much. Right. All right, guys. This is an old song. It's called Friends. Let me know she's mine 
So, yeah, I mean, I, that was going to be one of my questions, but do you feel still able to be creative and able to write songs right now? And are you guys just, like, recording from your house or, like, you find a studio or, like, uh, We have a studio. Mm-hmm. And, to, and, to, and to answer your question, yeah, like, it's been really, you know, um, it's really been really conducive to the whole creative process. It's just because that's all we have left to do now is just yeah. sit and write music. Yeah. You know? All we have is time. All we have too. is time. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So. so. Love it. Um, so, yeah, the, the creative juices have been flowing and we're just making use of our time as best we can. Amazing. So these are leading into an album, ideally, or? Yeah, yeah, we're working on it right now. Yeah. We yeah. were going to record it, but um, uh, some other endeavors kind of got in the way. Um, so hopefully, hopefully, like, within the next month, we'll be in the studio recording our Sick. third. Yeah. And mm-hmm. we're, we're pretty stoked. And, um, like, these last two songs have been definitely, like, kind of more folky, acoustic kind of stuff. But what we're cooking up right now is, is completely different. Oh, than really? What we, yeah, usually do, so. Wow. Yeah. Pretty excited about it, actually. It feels good. I feel like we're all in the same space, or, like, uh, mindset, and... We're all available and yeah. just giving it our all, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I love it. We've it become good. more comfortable with the ri- the you know writing process, and mm-hmm. so everything's coming along pretty well. Amazing. That's mm-hmm. great to hear. Yeah, I mean, it may be too early to talk about, but do you do you guys have like a theme in mind or like something that you're going to tackle lyrically on the album? Or is too it early. More? It's too early. That's yeah. Too early. <laughs> yeah, yeah we haven't even. <laughs> there's there's definitely come a, cu- a few songs that I've definitely set aside in my mind lyrically that are going to be kind of yeah political cool. you know or, or at least just kind of talk about the environment right now yeah um and a lot of it is you know love songs and introspective kind of lyrics love it which is like what we've always been doing really you know it's just trying to keep things real yeah you yeah. know like whatever we're feeling we're not trying to like do anything gimmicky or anything it's just we've always cared about to be politically and socially conscious and uh, we've always liked to write music that um is relevant to our own lives yeah you know and uh so yeah i love it i mean i think that's what breaks through because i feel like people could sniff out dishonesty and you know and i think they could connect with true just kind of letting it flow like being a vessel for whatever's coming exactly yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's awesome especially Um, in the live in the live uh, shows i feel like people pick that up too you know yeah put out those uh those vibes and yeah uh, yeah and people, totally people pick it up yeah um so yeah the last thing I, I i wanted to ask i in that interview i also read that you came up with the name while on psychedelics i think yeah. for the band um and yeah I'm, I'm i'm very interested in that <laughs> not like that specific thing but just like how psychedelics work in your body i don't think that they're very negative and i think again like i was saying about music like being a vessel for whatever is coming through, and I think that uh, uh, psychedelics help open that up, to a sense. Um, so, is that? I mean, do you guys experiment with that? And like, was that your best idea through that, or do you like write or do anything through those? Well, I mean, like, I've I've always, me personally, I've always been an advocate for psychedelics, especially like natural ones like um, mushrooms or uh, you know ayahuasca, DMT. Yeah. Um, because I think those things can break barriers in your consciousness that would otherwise take a really long time for someone. Right. But, um, yeah, we, the, the name, our name, is a, our band name der- was derived from a psychedelic experience that me, this guy, and our, our old bass player had. And back in our old studio in East, uh, East L.A., we, uh, we took some shrooms one night and... We started jamming, and I felt like I was floating off the ground because um, I was, like, peaking, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and then afterwards, we were kind of just sitting around, like, in a powwow, smoking weed and talking about the jam. And I was like, fellas, I, f- I felt like I was levitating or something. <laughs> and at the time, we were trying to figure Dude, out... A, we were uh, trying so hard. We were trying so hard. Line. Googling any idea. Is that a band name already? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> process but yeah naturally it came out yeah Yeah. and then so we looked up i thought of the word levitation and i was like that's a cool word and it's pretty psychedelic you know yeah that's what we're going for as a band so let's check it out and so we looked on google 
Um, of course and it was taken. Yeah, some band from the 90s already had it. Right, right. So um, we kind of elaborated a little bit more like, okay, well, levitation is a cool word. Maybe we can add on another word to it. And as we were just sitting there, I realized we were in a room. <laughs> we were always in that room. We were always yeah. in that room, yeah. So that's how the, the name it. came to be, Levitation yeah. Room. I love it. Yeah. That's a cool experience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate the story. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I remember that was like my, like, I was revisiting that. Right? I've done it before, and I was kind of, like, nervous. I was like, oh, my God, am I going to have another scary, like, experience? But it was the complete opposite. And, uh, yeah, it just led to a lot of positive things for us. I love it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I love it. Yeah, I feel like a lot of the stuff is consistent. Like, even some of the artwork and stuff is really cool and kind of, like, trippy and just, like, very, yeah, yeah. just very, like, artistic. I love it. Thanks, yeah. Thanks, Gee, man. Thanks, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah we've cool. always worked with cool artists and friends of ours and stuff. And We're all artists, I feel yeah. like, you know? He, yeah. He's we a great artist, and yeah. also he, he does great graphic design. So we, we work a lot on our own on our own like aesthetics and, yeah. and stuff you know nail it nail yeah it. um sweet well one more thing just because you guys have awesome tattoos what what's your favorite tattoo my favorite tattoo uh, it'd have to be this good looking cock <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, a kind of like an ode to like the uh little red rooster song but uh i don't know i just think that's it's rad cool little pl- and, and it's like a nice placement nice. <laughs> sweet uh mine would have to be I actually hate both my tattoos, <laughs> but I think they're dumb. But um, I, if I had to choose one, I would keep this one. It's the Virgin Mary. You got to show them the, the face. Yeah, there's no face on it. Oh, it never got finished. But eye. Yeah, and then I have an all seeing eye on it. It's really dumb. Anyways. <laughs> I think it's cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, yeah, so you have a 7 inch right now that people could buy still? Maybe? Yeah, they're still available at there's the Greenway there. shop. I think cool. it's just the black vinyls right now. With okay. the it's classic though, you know? Classic yeah. vinyl. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then uh, also Headspace is still available out there. Somewhere, and, um, yeah. Yeah, hopefully we can try to do some kind of cool reissue in the future too of some old old songs out Sick. there in the world. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, so go by that. I'll, I'll put all your links and website and socials and everything in the description of the video. Yeah. And uh, thank you again for being here. Is there anything else you guys wanted to mention or talk about before we get into the music? Uh, yeah. Well, we Don't have a better days, like a live stream thing going on. Uh, October 22nd, I believe, we'll be doing it. So check that out, Better Days Festival. Yeah. Sick. Yeah. Sick. Thanks. Oh, go out and vote, too, you know? Yeah, very true. Yeah. Very crucial. Um, sure. Awesome. Well, yeah, thank you again real quick to DC Shoes for all the kicks and just everything. And then Topo Chico Waters. Love you guys so much. Thank you, Topo Chico. Thank you, man. Thank you, guys. <laughs> yeah, Cheers. thanks. Appreciate Bye. it. All right, this next number is another new uh, single that we just released called Quarantine. The sun is a shining with no sign of life on the street. Yesterday's gone and tomorrow seems obsolete And as I rise to my feet I feel so confined Cause the news report is telling me I've got to stay inside There's 
the silence that speaks with voice that worries my mind. There's no use in checking the clock to ration my time. There's a lady I know who lives on the other side of I'm wondering if she's okay and safe and sound.